Morning Wolf backed us up, backed us up farther and farther. So, so as we, we await that, I'd like to just provide a little color on this 19-year-old this Jahar because I was just speaking in the last uh, 20 minutes or so with a couple of his friends. Um, they were buddies. They went to the, the same high school together here in Cambridge. It was a Cambridge uh, Ringe in Latin High School. And, and I just want to play a piece of this interview because uh, they talk about Jahar as a leader. He was the captain of the wrestling team their senior year here in Cambridge. He he uh, was a volunteer in the community, volunteered for a group called Best Buddies, helping out disabled kids here in Cambridge. Take a listen to this. Let's start with, um, when's the last time you saw Jahar? Uh, I saw Jahar maybe last year. Yeah. I mean, it was just around, just high and by kind of thing. You both wrestled with Jahar. What What kind of kid was he? He was a fun kid, you know, he liked a lot of people, he had a lot of friends, diverse people, type of friends, you know, he was cheerful, never really mellow, he was like never really mad at the world, he was mellow and all that, you know. Can you tell me what, you, you were his um, same weight class on the wrestling team, what was he like with you? Well, I went to college with him and the last time I seen him, he, it was at UMass Dartmouth and he was a really nice kid. And with the wrestling, he was a really nice kid, you know. He, he, was, he was the kind of kid that would push me harder. Like, he knew all kind of, he was, he was a good fighter. He was an all-star wrestler. And I was new to wrestling, so he really helped me. Like, he would push me all the time. He would push you? Was he, like, a leader? He, he was a captain on his senior year, but before that, like, he, was, he, he knew how to fight. And I, I wasn't so good at fighting, and he would help me fight. He would show me moves. He would help me run faster. He would, he would just help me, help me do better, you know. Is he someone you respected? Yeah, someone I would look up to, I guess, you know, like, I, I kind of thought, you know, this is the kind of kid that would go to, like, a UFC or something like that. He was, he was someone I could trust my life over, I think. Tell me, um, tell me a story, something that you, were, you recall with, with you and Jahar, an anecdote. Uh, one thing I can remember is uh, one of the wrestling matches, we went to wrestling matches, and I lost my match, and he won the match. And even though I lost the match, you know, he was like, I, can't, I really felt bad because the coach was, he was pushing me really hard. He was like, you got to beat this guy. You can beat this guy. I lost the match by a couple of points. And the guy, Jahar, he was like, it's cool, dude. You, you're going to win the next, next match. And you know? he was someone that always motivated me. So, Did you guys ever at any point in time hear him talking about hating Americans, plotting anything? He was, he was, at first time when I saw him, I think he was, he was white, like regular American. Yeah. Yeah, like um, like I said before, like he loved the he had a wide variety of friends. He loved everybody. He partied, you know. He, he likes. He never hated America. He was trying to be a typical American boy, you know. He was a excellent. Like I said, he said he's an excellent wrestler. Did what, did he? Have boxer. He did lots of stuff. He volunteered apparently for a Best Buddies Club, which is like uh, people who volunteer for the Down syndrome. How about the Down syndrome? So he's he loved people in general. He's cheerful. When he did boxing, I know like. He's a small person, so I used to make fun of him, and he'd just laugh it off and prove, like, you know, that he's a good at everything, and he's very motivational, like, part of What about his relationship with his older brother? What kind of relationship did they have? He never mentioned anything about his family or any, like, he never mentioned his background at all. Yeah. Did you, did you guys even know where he was originally from? Yeah, he told me he was from some part of Russia, Ch Chesko or something, I'm not sure exactly. Chechnya. Yeah, that, that's all he told me. When he talked about where he was from, what did he say? That, I, I just asked him, because I didn't know where he, where he was from. He asked me where I was from. I told him I'm from Nepal. And, and then I asked, I asked him where he's from, because I thought he was American. He looked white to, me, white to me. I thought he was regular American. His English was really good. I thought he was American. And then he, he told, he, his, like, we're just talking about racism. Like, like we're friends from all different countries. That sometimes we just make fun, fun of each other. We're all friends. And uh, other friend, he was, he was saying he was from Moscow. So. Not Moscow, Ch Chesko, Russia. So that's that's all I know about him. Like his one, background. Sorry about it. the one example is, like me and him, we used to all sit in lunch together in high school, and everybody used to criticize us because it would be I'm Hispanic, so it would be me, Jahar, Sanjay, you know this guy right here, and um, we would all just hang out together, and it would all be like one big community, one big family. Cause that's one of the motives in uh, Cambridge Ringe and Latin, opportunity, diversity, and respect. So we had respect for all type of people. We just joke around and never really hated anybody. So if you're telling me that he, you're saying he had respect for all kinds of people, all walks of life, when you heard that he may be the one capable of 
doing what happened here in Boston on Monday, your reaction is? I'm shocked. Like, I, I feel like it's a dream, to tell you the truth. I feel like I haven't woke up today. I mean, it's, I'm not sure if it's possible or not. It could be, it could be not be, but I'm just really shocked. I mean, I would never expect this to happen. Are you, it's, when, when I first heard it, I, th I thought it was a joke. I would never expect that, that thing to happen. It's just, it sounded impossible to me. It's such a nice kid. I would never expect anything like that. Not. Final question, you said you were at uh, UMass Dartmouth, and so you saw him. How, how recently did you see Jahar? It's been a year, about a year. I met him at Target because I was staying off campus, so he was staying in the campus, I was, and I met him at Target. I was buying something, and I talked to him about school school and stuff, and he was telling me he had to take calculus too because he, he didn't take the calculus too during the spring, fall, spring semester, so the registrar, they were making him take calculus too during the, during, the small, during the summer. That was last year. So how come, if you guys were such buddies, how come you haven't seen him in a year? Did he stop reaching out to you? When we're buddies, we don't like to, we don't call each other. We, if, if we meet, we just say, hey, what's up? How's it going? In, call, in high school, it was the same thing. You know, we used to get out of lunch, get to the table. If the friend shows up, he shows up. If he doesn't show up, he doesn't show up. It's the same thing in college. We go to college. If we, if we see him, we just say, hey, what's up? How, how you doing? If we don't see him, it's just, we don't. You know, Not a big deal. So there you have it, two, two young voices, two youngsters here in Cambridge who, who knew and really uh, respected uh, this 19-year-old Jahar is who they called him, uh, just one other. And they, they clearly, they didn't want their faces on camera. They were fearful and they were shocked. One other note, Wolf and Chris, we talked to one other young person who also was on the wrestling team with him and he was absolutely convinced. And again, this is just his opinion, convinced that it was this older brother that, that would have talked him potentially into... Um, into committing such a such a heinous act if in fact these two are the ones who did it. We will keep watching the scene here in Cambridge, Massachusetts as we await uh, a controlled explosion at this uh, home, this apartment complex. Live pictures of the firefighters waiting to go in in Cambridge. As soon as we see any more movement here, we'll come back out here. Meantime, Chris uh, Wolf, back to you.